Good morning, everyone. My name is Christopher Hancock, and I am pleased to welcome you to today's What's New in Splat demo. John, may I get a sound check to see if this microphone is working? Nine minutes. Sure, Chris. Hi. Good morning. Good morning, John. All right. So uh, we welcome you all. If everyone attending could kindly mute their microphones, that would be most helpful to us. And then uh, we're going to mute you for you um, uh, from time to time. But if you could keep those muted, and unless you have a question to ask, that would be very nice. Also, we would ask that you keep your video muted as well. And there's one more important thing. I will be recording this. So uh, this meeting is being recorded so that we can uh, see it. But again, if you could keep your, uh, video, your videos turned off, that would be most appreciated. John Cousin and uh, Nilda and Ryan are here to help you today. Um, John is going to send out an IM to you all right now. If you have any questions of any sort as we're going through, if you could let John know about that, I would, uh, I would, he will get those to me. You're welcome to, answer, to ask your questions in any language. We have people here that speak a lot of things that are <laughs> more exciting than the English that I attempt with. So uh, send those in. Um, I am actually today speaking to you here from the daylight in, uh, in beautiful Ortigas. So I've suffered through the quarantines and, um, and all the COVID tests um, here, uh, but even strangely still working from my apartment uh, because if I'm in the office, I have to wear a mask and I didn't want to do that this morning. So just here talking to you, but I'm happy to be back in your country. Very excited to be here for a bit. Um, I don't think it's normal yet, but it's, uh, it's, it's nice to be here. So I'm uh, going to start off this morning then and get going. Uh, have some exciting things to send to share with you. I'm going to be doing some demos of some code. Um, if it works, I'll be doing demos. If not, I'm just going to be talking about it. So let's get started. Again, we really are excited to have your questions. So shoot those over to John. Um, and I am, I have a fairly small screen here at my apartment, so I don't have your chats up, so I won't be able to see them, but John will. So 
I'll stop from time to time to see if anybody sent me a chat, but please uh, send those to John. And, um, and again, uh, thank you very much for being here. So off to the presentation. So we, we hope to do these about once a month to share with you all what's exciting and new out there. Uh, we continue to have uh, right now 15 full-time people working to make this all better for, for, the, for you as educators and for the learners of the Philippine school system. Uh, I am very pleased to say that in this last time period here during uh, the pandemic that we celebrated our 15th birthday here in the Philippines. Uh, that makes us seem all big and grown up. Um, pretty excited about that. Although, as some of you who are educators know, being 15 is maybe just when the trouble starts. So maybe for us too. Uh, I checked this morning. We now have over 75,000 hours on this project uh, trying to help the Philippine school system. Again, 100% of this is being done as a corporate social responsibility thing. So um, 40 developer years. So that's, again, a, a pretty important milestone. And with all that, SPLAT continues to be offered 100% for free for the Philippine school system. Uh, we, I know that this pandemic is changing things. It may, we, we haven't made a decision yet because we don't need to yet, but you know, given that this has been kind of a lumpy year for everybody, uh, we still plan on offering this for free for the foreseeable future. So just so you know, uh, if you're thinking about getting on SPLAT, uh, please talk to us and we'll see how that works. We have spent this last time uh, trying mostly to get the learners distance learning up to speed. And I am so pleased uh, about how it's going. But with this all, we are continuing to get better and better at encryption and speed and things like that with a focus still on being insanely in compliance with the learner data privacy and protection, but not just for learners. The Data Privacy Act, of course, applies to the data we're storing for you as educators as well. And so as we're moving now into the world where we're starting to talk about HR forms and, and other HR types of materials, as well as um, sending electronic documents back and forth, we're getting into the area where we need to start protecting much more than just the learners. And so everything we're doing, we're doing with a, a a focus first and foremost on data privacy because it's it's much easier we have found as developers working for our clients over these last 26 years or 15 years that it's it's much easier to do the data privacy security piece first and then to add the functionality it's much much harder to to put the you know as they say uh, in the United States it it's hard to you know you, you don't close the the gate after the horses have left the barn. So, um, so we're working on that. I'm going to come back to the learners because my developers are just fixing a little bit of code. Um, and uh, just one second, I'm just checking to see what they're telling me. Okay, so they're they're off and on. So. We're going to go and not do learners first. We're going to talk. We're going to start with the teachers and the advisors, and we'll come back to the learners once I get the thumbs up from my developers. So I am giddy happy, as I say, about what we've been doing uh, for teachers and advisors. And the first thing is that we have carved out a spot in our organization with John, who has always been here, but he now has a particular focus on doing educational materials and training for just helping people in the education space use our software. So we have 24 new YouTube videos. Um, I'm going to share over to that right now, uh, which is here. So here is, a, here is an example of um, a, a video that's out there running. Um, it, John goes through in these YouTube videos how to, in this case, he's uploading an MP3 audio file, but this YouTube video goes through all of the steps on how to build a quiz using enumeration, multiple choice, matching, um, all the other, the other styles we've got. And 
he's got a bunch of these. So we have taken all of the goodness that we already had in the way of education, and we are moving that over to these YouTube videos. So if you go on YouTube and just and Google us, uh, you'll you'll get a start there, um, and you'll start to see what what's in our world in the way of these videos. As of the writing of this, which was a day or two ago, there were 24, but I think the one that John just put up there makes us now at 25. So these YouTube videos are coming out at a very, very rapid rate. Uh, and it's not just YouTube videos. Everything that we're doing with the YouTube videos is also being trained or in, into a training manual. And that training manual is uh, available as well. So if you prefer to read the material, that's great. If you'd rather watch the material, that's great too. But we are trying super, super hard not to just fling this out there and say to you as educators, good luck, because good luck is not the answer. Good training is the answer. And we're trying to make sure that we're doing that for you. The other thing we're going, we have essentially said, or I have said in our organization, is that we're going to stop working on the distance learning as soon as everything we've got is already bug free and deployed. And we're really close on that. I mean, we're going to see some stuff today. It's probably not 100% bug free, but it's, it's really close. And with the stuff we'll see today, uh, I think we're, we're kind of where we need to be um, to, to make this all good for, the, for your learners. It's gotten super fast. We'll come back to that in a bit. Uh, but we're stopping on the learners so that we can focus now on the school administrators. So the first piece of that is we're working on the SF2 that will go from a teacher to an advisor to uh, the chairperson up to the school head, and then we'll turn that data into an SF4. We'll route it from the school head to the division uh, supervisor and then up to the district. And if that doesn't sound exactly like how your school does it, let us know because We'd like to know about all the different choices now so that we can make sure that we have all the different workflows of SF2s and SF4s in the system. So again, the way we're building this workflow, teacher, advisor, chairperson, school head, and then it changes to an SF4 and goes from the school head to the division uh, supervisor and then on up to the, I mean, to the district supervisor and up to the division. So if that's not how you do it, let us know because we, we can program anything as long as we know what it is. We're, we're bad at guessing on this. So, and I'll show you some screenshots of what this is, what we're building in a second. The other thing that we've done for the teachers and advisors is we've tried to make onboarding super, super, super easy. So we, we spend a lot of time and energy making the SF1 upload stronger, faster, better. And then having made it stronger and faster and better, we said, yeah, but we don't really think the advisors want to do this. So even though we've made it nicer, the advisors don't want to all do this. So we built a bulk upload for SF1 to let your school's ICT person upload the SF1s for the whole school and you can do an entire school's SF1 uploads in just a few minutes. Now, why is this so important? Well, from the SF1, we know your learners. We know which section they're in. We know who their advisor is. And, and we get a bunch of information about it. We know the grade level. So that SF1 essentially means we don't need any data entry. We don't need to type in the learners. We don't need to type in the advisors. Well, we still need to type in the advisors, but we have a second upload then for the personnel at your school. And if you are a uh, division office, we have a, a, a file that can be uploaded at the division level for personnel and at the division level to bring on whole schools. So these new bulk uploads mean that the IT-friendly people in your world can do a lot of the IT work in a, only a few minutes for the entire school, which dramatically reduces the workload on the advisors of starting up a new quarter. So huge, huge improvements. It's not sexy. It's not good to show, but I think you're going to absolutely love it. 
because the advisors now don't all have to go do this. They don't have to find it and upload it and do that. But one person does it, it's done for the school. Big, big deal. So what do these screens look like now back to the SF2 that we're talking about? So here's a sample of what, where we're heading with this. Uh, we're just starting to develop it on this uh, probably uh, it's Thursday. So I think we'll start this on Monday. This is a sample of what an advisor is going to see. And the purpose of this screen is so an advisor can look at their, in this case, I have seven teachers up there and see for their seven teachers who has turned in their attendance. And what's open in the middle is we're on week number eight uh, of this, of this uh, quarter. I've gotten uh, Jones has turned in all their attendance. Chin has turned in attendance. De La Cruz, not so much. And so this is a tool so that the advisors can, can help make sure that the data is coming in from the teachers so that they have it to produce the SF2. And then they're able to, in this, I just changed the screen here. In this case, uh, the advisor has gone back to week seven to see what's going on there because they now, uh, perhaps they need to submit the stuff for the month of February. Down at the bottom of this screen, you can see where by just going down there and clicking on a button, I can create, um, I can create an actual SF2 right there as the advisor. I also have a button at the bottom of the screen to submit my SF2 for uh, up to my uh, my chairperson. So, and, and that who your chairperson is, whether it's a grade level chairperson or or if maybe your school is small and you don't even have chairpersons, it goes straight from the advisor to the school head in a small school. We will we know about those flows, so we'll, we'll be helpful on those. Um, if you have something more complicated than just one advisor per grade or one chairperson per grade, we'd like to know about how you divide up your school. So that's what's coming with the SF2. This then will be a very similar panel that your chairpersons will see to see who's which of the advisors have turned theirs in. The school head will have something similar to this to see which sections are there and which ones are missing. The district super the district supervisors will have one and the division will have one. Again, same flow, same philosophy. Um, at the at the classroom level, we're dealing with weeks worth of data. Um, because that's how the software is written. Once we get up to the SF4 um, or even the SF2, we know that that is by month. Uh, so we, we, we switch from more of a weekly focus to a monthly focus as we head off in this direction. You as a school personnel will have access to look at this both by month, which is how the SF2 and SF4 work, which I think is not, I think it's fine. It's the way the form is, but for me, I think looking at it at a quarter basis is more relevant. So we're going to give you both. We're going to give you um, my version, which is by quarter. We're going to give you the classic deped version, which is by month. So you'll have both. So that's what's coming. SF2 is not the most exciting part of education. I'm sure you will agree, uh, but they're coming. Now, to really get nerdy here, um, all of those people on the call who are IT po folks, the ICTs, the ITOs, all, all, your, uh, all of you IT folks, be advised. Now, this is so exciting for us IT folks. And the rest of you absolutely won't know what I'm talking about because it kind of turns into Greek gobbledygook. But we are architecting this part of SPLAT to be able to use the Philippine PKI infrastructure. So that in the future, if you want these documents to be truly Philippine digitally signed documents using PKI, we're building that code in. Now, in the middle of a pandemic, really tough for everyone to go out and get their PKI keys. So we're going to not turn that on day one. We're probably going to use a self-signed certificate under the covers and just use it. But the architecture is going to be there from day one to truly support PKI digital signatures. And we're gonna start that with the SF2s. So that if the data gets modified at all after its submission, it will show up as though it's been altered and therefore is corrupted. So as I said at the, on the early part of the slides, we're dealing with the security and data integrity of this 
both to be in compliance with DPA, but also to be in compliance with the PKI infrastructure and true paperless, verifiable documents. It's boring, it's nerdy, but man, is it going to be cool when it's done. So if your IT people are on the calls, once you get done, would you explain how cool this is to the people that are like, what is he talking about? This doesn't make any sense. Anyway, that's exciting to me, at least. All right, next screen then. What do we have here for the, um, what do we have for the, uh, the school heads and the ICT? We have the bulk upload of the SF1 and the bulk upload of the personnel. So our personnel upload, we call the SPLAT7, which is like an SF7, but it's got slightly different data. Um, we found that you all have taken tremendous creative license <laughs> with the uh, with this SF7. The SF1s, because they come from LIS, are very similar. I mean, they're exactly the same, unless somebody's messed with them. But in general, SF1s are pretty clean. The SF7 is a train wreck. Um, everybody does them slightly differently. <laughs> and so we... We tried to we tried to come up we tried to work with the SF7s but we got so many variations so many different ways that you all use that document um, we've standardized that into our own document called the SPLAT7 you should be able to copy and paste most of the data from the SF7 into the SPLAT7 we ask a little bit more data um, there but it you, you should, when you look at it, you go oh this seems familiar. With the SPLAT7 you're able to bring in all the personnel in a school or in a division. So if, if you're, if once we're up and running on SPLAT, if the division HR persons want to help with this, uh, they can, they can do a name changes across the whole, uh, the whole division by just importing a new file. So trying to keep that data entry down to really low. Also, I think this is, uh, kind of fun. We are, we will have on Monday senior high tracks and strands all ready to, to use, uh, We've been working on uh, the different, the academic strands and the arts and the uh, the, the uh, practical stuff. It's all there. We've got all the classes in already, so you only have to pick and choose from a list of what you want to choose as long as it comes off the, the same list we're coming off of. So uh, the the senior high bit is, is as you know, kind of complicated. Um, we've done that work for you, so all you have to do is just go in and go, ah, they did it for us. It's all here. So, uh, so that's out there. Um, and then, uh, as I talked about, the SF2 for the chairpersons and the district supervisors is um, starting to we'll start rolling uh, early Monday. All right. What else is out there? We have a request from a wonderful person uh, in Beacon uh, named Mam Sol. She has given us a to-do, uh, probably now well over a year ago, um, to route some requests that are requests from teachers up to the HR department in the division. And those are things like uh, payslip requests, certified salons, uh, payroll history. Uh, the requests themselves don't have very much data in them. It's what comes back from HR that has data. As we get the PKI infrastructure done so that we have this encrypted and secured documents because this is HR, this is sensitive stuff. We want to make sure that we have data security implemented as effectively for this as we have for the learners. But those are, I have a team already working on routable HR forms. So this is where a teacher sends a request up to the division, someone at the division fulfills it and sends it back. But we want to make sure that that data is encrypted and secure its entire path. We don't believe that sending um, some of these things back through email is necessarily the most secure way of doing it. So we're working on that. Uh, if you have things like the certified salon request, the time slip request, uh, they, you know, things like that that are just requests for forms, if you have those, let us know. We'll put them on the list. Once we have the first one or two done, these are going to start to happen very, very quickly. The nice part about this is that the teacher or the other person at the school will no longer need to get in their car or a Jeep or a trike or whatever and drive all the way to, uh, to the division office to, make this, to, to submit their request. 
and then go a second trip back to retrieve it. It's going to be all paperless, all digital, all secure. So that should be a, a nice acceleration of the process. I think that will make everyone happy. Um, and at the division office, uh, again, the end of the SF2, SF4, you'll be able just to look at a dashboard and see which of your schools have gotten their data in, um, as it will everyone else down the food chain. So that's what's going on for divisions. All right, let me pause for a moment. John, um, uh, yes, John, to your question, but John, do you have any questions for me um, that you can share? None at the moment, Chris. Okay, I have some chats coming into me, so let me stop sharing here for just a minute <clears throat> and look at my screen and see if uh, any of these are questions or just people saying good morning. And to those of you who said good morning, I say good morning back. Um, okay, so I, I do see a question out there, and uh, it deals with, I've just downloaded Splat, but it doesn't work. So a, a note about that. Your school has to be up and running on Splat before you can use Splat at your school. We do have a demo that's out there, uh, splatph.com slash demo. Uh, no, slash, what's it, what's it called, John, for the, for it to try what a learner sees on their gadget? I'll send it out. Okay, well, could you test it with the new build and just make sure it works before you send it out, please? Sure, okay. So uh, we, have, we have a link, John will post up before the end of today's presentation. If you've never seen what a learner sees on their gadget, you can go to this link on your phone, Android or iOS, download the app, install, install it, pretend it to be a learner with our fake learner. Uh, actually, it's a fake parent. And with that fake parent, you can get on. You can see what the parent sees. The, the parent, in this case, has many, many children um, from a kindergartner, third grade, I think fourth grade, sixth grade, uh, and up. And you can get in and see some examples of how, a, how our system works with learners in this case. So that's out there. We'll send that out. Uh, I just want to run through a real quick test to make sure we haven't broken it. Uh, we just have been pushing out much, much code. It's so much faster. Oh, man, is it much faster. Okay. Let me stop for just a second. Let me see if this screen is working. I'd like to share some stuff with you. This, of course, is the, uh, the exciting part and, for me, the terrifying part of doing a demo on live code that I didn't get to practice with before the show. So um, it is a very, very good chance that I'm going to show you some stuff today that might break. But if it works, it's going to be magical. Okay, well, that's still refreshing for a minute. So let me go back to my... Uh, slide deck for a second and just talk about it while I wait and see if that screen is going to work for me. Okay, so what I hope to show you in a few minutes, uh, maybe it'll work, maybe it don't, it won't. Um, I know it it does work in our in development environment. I'm not sure it's going to work in my my demo environment. We now have listened to you all, and what we kept hearing was, can we send out video lectures to our learners? And our answer pretty much was, no, they're too huge. You, if you listen to me speak on this, on this sort of topic before, um, a, a YouTube video is at least 100 megs per hour. Um, and that we thought was too much data use for a, uh, a learner in your world that has a, a modest amount of money to spend on this. So we have compressed the video. We have made the audio not stereo, it's now mono, little things like that. We have really, really, really worked. And we were able to take a video that uh, I took one of my last YouTube presentations, which was about, I think, 300 megs. It was huge because it was two hours long. We've compressed that down to just 40 megs. So that's a huge, huge difference in size, just over 10%. 
With that sort of compression, we are now comfortable, confident, and capable of sending out teacher-created videos to your learners so that you can do stand-up lectures in front of a camera. Um, I've got the world's worst camera here on this uh, my, my uh, apartment PC. But with even a bad camera, you're going to be able to do a video lecture. It will, you can go right to the Splat site. It captures it right on the site. It shrinks it down and you can assign it out to your learners and they'll get it in just a few seconds, not a few hours. And they can then watch your lectures 100% offline. So that doesn't mean they have to be hooked up to the internet while they're watching the videos. They go offline with these videos. They're that small. They can watch your lectures. They can um, take the test questions and all that. And then once a week, come back to the internet and sync up. So still asynchronous, still working on inexpensive Android phones, inexpensive, second-hand, third-hand iPhones, all good. We don't want the learners to have to go buy more stuff. Now, I think you thought, because I think I thought that maybe we were getting close to the end of the pandemic, but I don't think that anymore. And maybe you don't as well. And so we would really encourage you to talk to us. If you want to just try this out and get on and we'll, we'll build a test school for you so you can try this, see how it works for you. We had someone ask, you know, do we have to go through all this work? Because they saw some of John's uh, wonderful training materials and they said, do we have to go through all this? And the answer is absolutely not. The simplest way you can use Splat is just to upload the PDF as a, the module. And having, if you upload the module, um, then you just upload it as a PDF, put on some test questions. You could be done uploading things in a few minutes. So we, we go the long, what I think good way, but there's a much faster, easier way to do the, what, we, what we show in our training, which is just to upload the module as a PDF, and then, and then all you have to do is build a test. Um, John, could you try getting into the content screens on your side and see if it's just my session is bad, I need to log out and log back in, or if I really need to um, not do this? All right, one second. I am not... I'm getting the, what we call in development the spinning circle of death, which means the page never, ever loads. Okay, we have, uh, we have new question types. So they are for enumeration. So this allows you to list, uh, to ask a, a bunch of words from your learners. We have matching, which I hope I'll get to show you today, um, multi-matching or classification which allows you to uh, categorize certain words. Um, and those are, all, those are all working nicely in our, in our development environment. Uh, we're gonna be pushing those live hopefully today. Um, we also have a new thing called worksheets. I won't be able to show you those today, but they're, they're done. We just, we're just QAing them. What worksheets allow you to do is to create something that looks like a quiz in the middle of the content. And when the learner gets to the end, we show them what their score was. And then we say, you, you missed some questions. Would you like to go back and try these again? And if they say they want to go back and try them again, we give them, you, you as content creators can put a hint on the question that says, when this learner comes back to the question, they missed it the first time. Now they're coming back. We show them a hint so that they can, they can try to get the question right. If they still don't get the hint, then they can come back a third time and just see what the correct answer was. Very focused on using worksheets as a positive, constructive learning tool, not a you got it wrong, bad person tool. So really trying to be focused on positiveness, constructive education by getting them to go back and try some questions again, see if they got it right the second time. And if they didn't, even with the hint, to again, encourage them to go back and look at the correct answers so that when they get to the actual quiz, they've had as much practice with positive reinforcement as we can give them. So we think that, that the, what we've done in worksheets will, will be nice because in a classroom, in the middle of, a, of some subject material, you would probably grade these together as a classroom and you probably go through the answers together as a classroom. So the worksheet's important, but the grading in the classroom is, is a very important part of worksheets. And of course, we lose that with 
independent, distant learners. There's no, there's no, there's no concept of going through the answers together for the reinforcement. So we've tried to take that reinforcement of going through the grading in class and make it something that works in an asynchronous education environment. So we're going to get that out there so you can look at it on the, um, what we show as, the, as our demo learner. So when, when John puts that link up later, probably not today, uh, probably not until Monday, I would guess, but we'll have some of these out there, the worksheets with the, um, the second chances and then the grading. We'd love some feedback to see if we did this right. We, Chris? again, are not educators. Yes, John. Yeah, uh, mine just loaded fine uh, after a few Okay, seconds. well, well then I'm going to – I might need to close that browser tab and start over. Okay, thank you very much for that heads up. Um, uh, and I have one question here. What is the minimum yes, system that, requirement for Splat to work? Can you answer that while I find this email from Casey, please? <laughs> sure, let me open the link quickly. <laughs> I've done testing the uh, contents for the demo, by the way. Thank you. So for Android phones, uh, Splat requires at least Android version 5.1, or what they call Lollipop. That version was released like 2014, so even older phones can uh, make Splat work. For iOS devices, Splat needs uh, iOS version 11 and up. Oh, sorry, uh, 12 and up. So that was released like three years ago. Okay, In John, terms my of content... Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead. Yep. Please. Yeah, so in terms of memory, uh, the Splat Teacher app is only uh, around 80 megs. So that's without the content. Same goes with the uh, Learner uh, app or the Splat Family app. And I think that's basically it, Chris. Okay. Great. Thank you, John. Okay, and let me just check and see. asking one of my developers a question. All right, John, since my system is not being as helpful as yours is, are you in dev or are you in UAT? Uh, UAT. Okay, can I get you to share your screen and we'll walk through the content. Do you, have you used the video capture or can we at least get to that screen on yours? I've never used that, but uh, we can try. Okay, all right, let, 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 let me just try it then on Chrome and just see if a different browser maybe because I, I think I'm I'm cached. Uh, it may. This is that awkward silence that us developers just hate because it's this part where supposed to, you guys are supposed to be like, ooh, and ah, and instead you're going, huh, and what? And I'm still getting the splitting circle of death. John, can you share your screen, please? And then um, if mine happens to come back while we're doing this, but if you can just walk, take us uh, to the parts where we can show them the new uh, test types. Uh, 
Is this one okay? Yeah, sounds great. Let me just switch over so I can see what you're doing instead of what I was doing. <laughs> you know what? Let okay. me start with the easiest uh, question type. No, first. no, this, this is... Uh, uh, so he, okay. So we got true, false. That's easy. Um, up at the top, we uh, oh, and as, as a as a proof of concept, the other day I have uh, we have an employment test that we have here at Right Size. We use the app to do our employment test because I can't have the applicants come into the office, and so we actually use this ourselves in nature. The other day, I thought it went really really well. So we've got true, false. Uh, John, next please. So fill in the blank. Uh, we have choices of, uh, can I see the other, um, well, with fill in the blank, we've got long answers that you can use, probably, um, you know, some different things there. But we also support um, the ability to um, have different variations of answers. So, and down at the bottom, all or nothing points. Uh, so we can do all or nothing, or you just get so many points um, so many points per correct answer. Uh, can I see matching, John? Now, let me show you the sample question for matching. Okay. There. Okay. So on matching, we present this as a pair when you're critting them in. And then on the gadget, we, we mix them all up so that things are, are done. You have the ability with this to put pictures on either side. So you can have a picture of a cat or a dog and on the other side, the words cat and dog for the young kids. Um, and, and then again, we, we mix them all up. We don't yet support an unbalanced list uh something internally we're using a horrible term we call them orphans um where there's more answers on one side than the other something uh, something that doesn't have up here we'd like a better term than orphans <laughs> anybody want to make a suggestion uh something better for what an unbalanced list is um because we know that some of you like that that philosophy in education uh, we don't know what to call it but we are it is on our list uh can i see multi-match please john or um uh, categorization. I'm oh, sorry, classification. Okay, so here uh, we have the ability to have. Uh, could you, yes, great, perfect. So we've got simile and metaphor, and then down at the bottom we can add, start adding, in this case, some uh, some text about for the for the learner to say. Tell us each one of these. Is it a simile or a metaphor? The other thing that you could use this for is um, in the earth sciences is put what is this thing? Is ice a solid, a liquid, a gas, or a plasma? So we let you put those in up to four buckets, and that's really limited by the size of the gadget screen. Um, so this would be things for things like, you know, is this is this a solid gas, plasma, or liquid? Um, Whereas the matching would be more like match the cities to the countries or the uh, the areas to the province or something like that. Um, so uh, you can do that. In both cases, the list can be as long as you want it to be. Uh, in this case, there can only be up to four categories, and that's because of how we present it on the screen. Can you give me a new page, please, John? You mean under, under the module itself? Uh huh, please. Okay, so, um, okay, the code you're looking at doesn't have it yet either. Okay, so there in the middle where we have uploaded file, uh, the, wait, oh, sorry, there down at the bottom. Can you hit the record button uh, for, 
Uh, no, we still don't have here. Okay. So on, on this build, we still don't have the ability to capture video, but I think by Monday or Tuesday, we'll have the ability for you, you as educators to go try this and see how you like it. Um, where if your PC has a camera, as mine does right at the moment, you'll be out there able to go. And just like there's a record button at the bottom of the screen, you'll be able to hit record and start recording your video. Um, and if you like it, it's good. Now, that same technology, we're really close. So John, I'm going to take this back. Um, we're really close to having that on. Oh, actually, actually, can you? No, never mind. We're really close probably to working on the ability for the learners to do projects. And what that, what we mean by projects, uh, in fact, I am going to take this back, John. is the ability for you as educators to hand out to your learners something, and I'm just use cheer dance as an example, to give out to your learners a, a project like a cheer dance where it's it's got things in it that you have rubrics for. So you might want them to upload a video of their cheer dance and that when you then go to grade it, you would look at the grading and say, okay, this, this cheer dance has um, five points for um, the choice of the song, five points for choreography, five points for athletic ability, um, something like that, and that we would grade those in the same place on the uh, grading side as we currently do essays. So that we haven't started that yet. If anybody has anything about projects they want us to include, but it's almost all code we already have, but the difference there is that your learners will be able to upload videos and upload pictures so the teachers can grade them. What we're, going to, what we're struggling with on this first is uh, something I did the other day that caused uh, some, some drama in my life. I had a picture that I wanted to send out to everybody that works at Right Size of our exciting new, um, of our exciting new servers. And uh, let me um, share this for a second and just show you our exciting new servers. Um, I think this is quite cool. So I went into our computer room. All of the servers on the left are our new Splat servers. There are 18 brand new servers sitting there ready. So that's one server per, uh, per region. So we have a dedicated server for every region in the country on the hopes that we get at least one or two schools from every region. Uh, we on the rack on the right side, we have another two servers for Splat. So we have uh, a total of 20 dedicated servers for Splat ready to accept your data, plus another two on the on the right hand side are there supporting Splat, but they're not really Splat dedicated. So total of 20 dedicated for Splat, but that's not really the story. The story was I sent this picture to my team. Turns out it's huge. That. And, and I'm like, wait, why did I just send out this huge picture? So I know because I just did it that it's, it's super easy to accidentally send out too much data. That we don't want these young people taking their phones and uploading a 50 megabyte video of their cheer dance. We want to smash it down because we don't want them to spend the money sending it up, but we also, as selfishly, don't want to sit in the server space with every child in the nation sending up a 50 meg video. So we're working right now to make sure that we can squash the video size on their gadget before they hit the send button so that we don't end up with big files on the server. So as soon as we can have the size squished, we're going to support that. I would expect we won't have that for your third quarter, but I completely expect we're going to have it for Philippine fourth quarter. So that's coming uh, not super soon, but it is coming. Uh, so if you have input on projects, if that's something you, you would use, um, that um, that would be very, very helpful. Uh, yeah, John, that that's a good suggestion. I just am not logged into dev. I okay, am. and I don't think we have time. We will. We, do you want to do a video capture? You have a. I didn't think you had a camera. Oh no, uh, I'm just going to share my screen. Just to do the thing with, with it earlier. Okay, let's go ahead.
Okay, can you click the video? Sure. Okay, and so right there in the middle of the screen is the record video button. And if John had a camera on his PC, which he doesn't, um, if he clicked that button, it would start recording video. What happens when you click it, John? Just out of curiosity. <laughs> Does it do anything when you click it? Oh, yeah, you, you don't have a device. Yeah. Okay. Yes, device okay. nothing. You you don't have a device though, as we knew. So so that's what's coming soon. Um not soon, like Monday. Uh this is not future stuff. This is it just needs to get through QA and out on the internet so that you all can practice recording videos. And we think a really nice accelerated way for you to get up and running on Splat is to go to the PDF tab, upload your module. Go to the video tab, record yourself doing the lecture as, as just as you would talking to your learners, walking through the material, telling them how it works. We think that that's a very personal way to, to educate. And with, with that, then go out and create some quizzes for them. We think that you can get a week's worth of content uploaded like that super, super quickly. That gets you up and running. Once you're up and running, you may go back then and say, you know, I'd like to cut this up and have some more inline questions, which we call knowledge checks, um, which is where a, a learner is going through a page or two, and then you stop and make sure that, they're, that they know what they're doing before they keep going. Uh, this is the part where we won't let a learner continue if they don't get it right. So this is a, they, they need to prove to us that they're, they know what they're doing because they're going through here. Um, we think that's effective, but it also takes longer for you to do. So fastest way, upload a PDF, do a video, do a quiz, we think you could have an entire week's worth of material up and running in, I don't know, 15 or 20 minutes that way. So um, try it. See if you like it better. Uh, we should have this out there for you all to play with on Monday um, is my hope. And we can let us know what's working. So that then gets me basically to the end of my content. Uh, John, I'm going to grab the screen back. Thank you. The last thing I didn't show you, uh, but we, you may or may not have noticed it when you tried the app for the demo before, but we were having maybe 15 minutes to get the first time use of Splat up and running. We've now got that down to seconds. So you can now get up and running on Splat insanely fast. We found some performance things in the software that were just inefficient. We have streamlined it and we've spent a lot of this last bit of time doing, again, unsexy stuff. This is not sexy at all to make it fast, but your learners and your families will certainly appreciate that. We're now going back and working on the same sort of enhancements for speed on the teacher side. So uh, that gets me to the end of the presentation. Uh, we talked about SF2s. I think that we're going to have SF2s out. Uh, I think we're going to start showing that in probably a week or two. Um, the senior high tracks and strands are ready for use now. Uh, the HR forms we're starting to work on. I, I think that's a few weeks before we have those to show to somebody to see how it's going. So here are the people. If you are not on Splat yet, then please speak with Nilda and her team. Uh, Chi is, is her team. Uh, Nilda and Chi about getting on board. So they, they help people get uh, hooked up with us. Uh, you can reach Nilda at the email there. If you have questions about training, you can talk to John. He does all of our uh, training about how, how we get people up and running. John is going to start doing a question and answer session every week where we're going to have a Zoom call out there. If you have a question, come ask your question and you can leave or you can stay and listen to everybody else. We're going to have a two-minute rule, meaning if nobody asks a question for two minutes, we're going to end the meeting. So if we want to move fast. We want to get through the questions, get the answers. And then if everybody stops asking questions, we'll, we'll stop the meeting. But we're going to do that every single week, uh, starting the week after Holy Week. So that if you have questions, there's a place for you to get on and ask them. You can also just send us an email. Uh, we're happy to answer them that way. But if you want to talk to a live human, we're going to do live humans once a week. And Ryan heads up our support side. So if you're having bugs or problems with the software, uh, focus those in Ryan's direction. He and his team, uh, Stephen and Ray, will do their best to try to make sure that whatever you're experiencing, we can fix. Trust me when it say it, we say that most of the time, it's probably us, not you, and we really want to fix it. 
So when I used our software to test our own new staff the other day, we found some things that didn't work. They're fixed now. They're fixed for the whole world. So please tell us when you find a problem so that we can fix it for the whole world. All right. Uh, that brings me to the end. Unless we have um, any questions, I do want to assure you all that we still have 15 full-time people trying to make this better for you. If we're not doing what you want us to do, tell us and we'll move. I mean, this, uh, we are not Microsoft. We are not Google. We are able to do what you want because we're not building this for any other country. We're building this exclusively for the Philippines. And if this is not meeting the needs of the Philippine education system, then please tell us how to do better so that we can do better. We, we really want this to work for you. you. We want you to say, wow, this is going to make our kids learn faster. We, it's going to make our jobs so that we can do what we wanted to do in life, which is educate, not fill out forms in three parts with lots of wet signatures. We want to educate, and we hope that we can help you do that. So um, I see a a chat message. Um, yes, the, the person who just said I uh, can't sign on, uh, we we will get you, sir, uh, some help. Or, uh, ma'am, I'm sorry, we're not sure on the name. Uh, we'll get you some help. Uh, I I see your name. I'll, I'll grab it and we'll we'll get back to you. Um, but again, send send Ryan a a ping at the end of this via email, and we will make sure that we don't lose your help for support. And John, are you ready to send out that link to the um, the learner thing? Yes, let me just grab it quickly. Okay. And we're going to be doing these calls once a month um, to show with you what, what is new. Uh, there's the link on the, uh, the Zoom chat. If you click on that, there are all the instructions on how to download uh, Splat Family Demo. We are going to keep adding new stuff there like the videos. So uh, check in with that um, a little bit from time to time. I think you know, early next week, we're gonna have some videos there where we've, we've gone the, the fast route, which is just to upload a PDF, put out a video and put a quiz so that you can see what it feels like to a learner if, if you go the fast route. Um, I have a couple questions here, Chris, and comments. Yes, please, John. Uh huh. Uh, how do offline videos work for the learners? Do they need to download them manually or is it automatic download once they log in? It's automatic download once they log in. They don't need to do anything. Now, what we don't have working at, at all on this is the cleanup because we know that many of your learners, <laughs> we know that many people, learners included, have, have no space left on their phones because they take too many pictures of their friends or their food. Um, so we, we are working on well, we're designing how to let learners get rid of videos that they don't need anymore. Um, things like, I I took the module, I got my grades back on the module, I will never look at it again, I can now get rid of the videos. So we don't have that yet because it's not a problem yet, but we know that's coming to, to clean this stuff up after use. But right now it just comes down, they don't have to go anywhere. We are sticking with our statement that we are not using any, any external software with Splat. So we're not going to ask them to, to go out to the Play Store or to iTunes and download things because we can't be sure that those things are going to respect the, the Data Privacy Act, and we can't be sure that those things aren't going to carry a lot of unnecessary um, you know, ads and other malicious potentially things. So everything they need to do in Splat is already in Splat, and they don't need to do anything except sync in order to get the videos. Is that a good answer or bad answer? Good answer. <laughs> okay. Uh, one comment here. Chris and team, congratulations, Chris and team, on this development. As I checked, it is easy to create modules for learners. The interface is user-friendly, and this is great news. Cheers. Well, thank you for those kind words. They are they are most appreciated because we really don't we're not getting very much feedback, so we don't know if we're doing good stuff or bad. So we really do want to hear the great stuff. It's most appreciated, but we also want to hear the suggestions for improvement. Uh, we need to learn from you uh, how to do this better. 
And another one, I'm excited to try Splat. How can we try the platform? I already asked for her uh, contact details. Okay. If, if, if anybody uh, wants to give this a go, wants to learn more, uh, if your school is not already on Splat, uh, uh, send Nilda an email because she's she helps people get on board. We want to answer your questions about the MOA. Uh, any other concerns you would have about how we're doing this, what what we expect of you, uh, Nilda and she would be delighted to help you with. Anything else, John? Uh, someone's trying to log in. I guess that's the same question you answered earlier. Uh, for those okay, who well, just logged on someone, to the demo website, uh, you don't need to log into that website, actually. You just need to follow the steps provided there. Uh, but don't click the login well, bot button <laughs> on the website. So you need to download the app first. Because I checked the website, Chris, and it has a login button on the upper right-hand corner. Maybe they clicked it instead of downloading the app. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll, we'll double check that here at the end of the video when John and I can focus our attentions on the demo app. But it, at any rate, if you haven't done it yet, give it till Monday because then we'll have the videos out there so you can see what it looks like when I, and I'm going to do this myself on this horrible, horrible piece of junk, cheap camera. I'm going to do a presentation and we're going to put it out there and see if even a really bad camera on a really old PC, because that's what I have here at home, it's a really old everything, because uh, I don't spend much time on this, is, um, is to see if this really works. And if it really works here, man, it can work anywhere, because um, I, I brought the oldest stuff home. So uh, we're, we're, we'll have some videos and some other things out there for you early next week. Uh, and uh, yeah, the person just asked me, is the registration for free? Everything about Splat is free. It's free for the schools. It's free for Dep Ed. It's free for your learners. It's free for their parents. There are no charges of any sort whatsoever for anybody to use Splat. This is a corporate social responsibility initiative. Now, we have in the MOA that when we get to the end of our third year, and so we're in year one right now, when we get to the end of our third year, we may charge 12 pesos per learner per year. But if we do that, which I hope we won't need to because I hope we're still okay, the money has already been spent on the development. Our hope is we, we're just about done. We hope with the Philippines, once we get these SF2s, SF4s, the routable forms, and some of the other um, end-of-year SFs, like the promotions and um, things like that. But as we get closer to the end here, we're going to start putting our developers on the U.S. software side because this started off in U.S., it's going to go back there. My hope still is that like Robinhood, uh, we're going to make the U.S. customers pay and we're going to use that money to give it to the Philippines for free. So, and someone just asked if it's on the Huawei. Uh, the Huawei, we have uh, an agreement with the Huawei store. And there's one form we just found that we needed to fill out for our app to be on the Huawei store. I think we might have gotten that done yesterday. So if it's not on the Huawei store today, it will be in the next day or two. We're really, really close to having it on the Huawei store because we know that the Huawei folks um, obviously can't go to Google Play. So we're aware of that. We're engaged. And if it's not there right now, it will be there in the next 24 hours or so. We just we missed one form. So I think I think we're super, super close. Anybody? That was a great question. Thank you for asking. Those are the sorts of questions I love. Anybody else have a question like that? A uh, question about the uh, offline videos, Chris. Do teachers yes, and have I control have one? on how long the videos will be available to the learners? Yes, the teachers have absolute control on that because let me share my screen and then I'll ask the question. I'll answer the question about modules here in a moment. Um, Just make sure I can get in here. Okay, as a teacher, you're going to go into the content section and build your content. Then you're going to go into your classes, into activity, 
into active activities, and you're going to say, I have a self-paced learning module that I want to send out to my learners. That self-paced learning has a date, which is a published date, so that you can do this in advance and say, okay, I don't want them downloading this stuff until the 26th, and then once they've got it on the 26th, then they have to have it done by, let's say, in this case, the second. So that gives them one week from the 26th to the second. I'm going to, when they, when they do this and they get a grade, I'm going to uh, send this into ECR bucket, um, let's say, written works too. And we have the ability to assign self-paced learning to subgroups in your depart in your class. So let's say you've got your, your class divided into the accelerated learners and then not the regular learners. You can assign extra work to your accelerated learners and the regular amount of work to your non-accelerated learners. So you have some choices there. That's all working uh, right now. I come in here. I find my, um, my, uh, my item I want to put out there. The learners will be able to download this from the beginning date only to the end date. And at that point, they won't be able to download it anymore. Now, the video will stay on their gadget until we get this new logic I was talking about that we haven't really designed yet, where we let them set settings and say, two weeks after I got my grade, then this stuff can go away. But we do want that we do want it to be that they ha the stuff has to have been graded. And that will be triggered by the fact that at, once I've finally gotten all of this graded, um, so let's say that I want to, I come in here to the grading method. I want to compare my learners. I can see how they did on all my questions. I say, okay, everyone's good. I have to lock the material at some point, which means I won't accept any more grades. Once I've done that, I can click this button, which shows the graded quiz to the learners on their next sync. So they can learn from this and see where they did well, where they didn't do so well. Um, and then I have the ability to send ratings back to the content creator if it wasn't me to tell them how I like their content. But this button, show graded quiz to the learners. Remember, they're offline. They're going to come in and say, okay, so in this case, uh, Rich uh, answered uh, cow on this question, but the real answer was snake. The, the one at the top in bold is the correct one. So Rovi got it right. Rich missed it. Um, and, and so we can see how people are doing on the test, who got what answer right. We are working right now today on getting the, um, the, the presentation of this on the matching, the multi-match, uh, and the enumeration. It's probably later today we'll have that done. We'll, but we'll then send that back out to the learners so they can go back into the quiz and say, how did I do? Once that happens, we will probably start a clock for about two weeks and say, after they've seen their grades, we'll probably delete the videos about two weeks later is what we're, we're aiming for. So if that feels good, tell us. If it doesn't feel so good, tell us. Okay, then a person asked another question. Where's my chats? Are the modules aligned um, to the um, MELCS from DepEd? The answer is, we are done, we do not create any modules. We are a software company, not an educated company. So we're giving you a place to put your modules, but we're not distributing any modules of any sort. It's just, we're a delivery system. We are, if you put it in, we'll deliver it. We'll make sure it's secure. We'll make sure that the learner data is protected. We'll make sure that your job gets easier because of this, but we're not writing any of the modules. We will help guide you through taking your modules and putting them in, though. So we will help you with education on that. So let me know if that answered the question. John, do you have anybody else? <laughs> nice answer. That's a recent chat. <laughs> uh, other than that, I don't have anything else. Okay. Well, great. So from all of us here at Ride Size, um, we're working really hard to try to make you happy. If we're doing it, let us know. If it's not, let us know. Um, exciting, exciting stuff coming out in the next few days because we think we're getting close to the end. Um, we know that there are some questions types that we're never going to do. We're not going to do crossword puzzles. We're not going to do the things where there's letters all over the page and you have to circle the word and there's another word and I'm circling words in a bunch of letters. We're never going to do those. But 
we will at some point, maybe soon even, let the learners take a picture of that if they do it on a piece of paper and upload it. So, um, uh, so, okay, and I see here uh, a, a person from a national high school that in uh, Legaspi that can't get on. I will forward that on to Ryan, who will get in touch with you immediately after this meeting, and we will get you some help. So we will we will definitely get that done. I'm copying that into a chat to Ryan right now so that he and his team can reach out to you. Uh, Ryan, and that message has been forwarded. So thank you very much for that, uh, sir. We will get, you will get a, you will get a ping from us uh, seconds after the end of this so that we can get you up and running. All right, uh, that's it, we're done. We really appreciate you being with us, we're excited to work with you. I very much long for the day. I'm, I'm happy to be back here in, in Ortigas. Uh, I, I came back to the Philippines to get the servers all ready for you. But um, I am so excited that someday I will be able to come out and visit your schools. I look forward to that tremendously. Um, and we really, really appreciate um, having this up and running. Um, the person who just said about can't install Splat Family, can you send me some contact information so we can call you back uh, after this, please. Um, the the person uh, anyway. Could, I, I need I need contact information on that about the Splat family. So if you could let me know who you are, we will call and help you because we want to be helpful. With that, I would say to you all, thank you so much. I wish you a very pleasant good morning, and um, and we hope to be working with you soon. Uh, we really appreciate it. Thank you. Goodbye. And I've got the information on the. Um, uh, the email. Thank you for that. All right. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you.